Hi, Photo Reefers. I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video is another of the recent corals that I got, the Anacopora, which is up here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to like people to follow me, know the routine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the camera close and then I'll talk about the different research things that I found out. Uh, so we're going to find out what is it? What's actually uh, Anacopora? So let's take a deep dive and find out what it's all about. Hold on. Okay, so here we are focused in front of the coral. Well, first of all, um, it's an SPS coral. In other words, small polyp stony coral. Now, this coral is considered an uncommon coral. Uh, not, too many, not too many people talk about them or know about them. Now, the common name of these type of corals are briar, B-R-I-A-R coral, because as the colony gets larger, the branches fuse together resembling a briar patch. Now, they are part of the Aquaporidae family, consisting of both Aquapora and Montipora corals. An Aquapora is considered to be closely related to Aquapora, Montipora corals in the sense that they, they have the same features of uh, Aquapora and at the, at the same token, shall we call it like a, a morph or a blend of Montipora. Now, they tend to be, uh, be fast-growing SPS corals and they are definitely much hardier than an Aquapora coral. So like let's say if you want to try out and you want to go into SPS, but especially uh, Aquapora, I highly would suggest uh, an Aquapora because they tend to be more hardier to uh, swings in DKH, in calcium, temperature, water parameters in general, and lighting. So I would highly suggest, um, I mean, uh, another uh, Aquapora that is hardy, uh, hardy than the regular ones, the high ends, which are more delicate, are the green slimer. But this one, uh, the Anacroporas, which come in different colors, and I'm going to talk to you about them, uh, shortly, they are even much more hardier than, let's say, uh, green, uh, green Slimer. And like I mentioned before, they tend to be fast-growing SPS corals and definitely much hardier than Acropora corals. Now, they come from areas surrounding the Great Barrier Reef, as well as the islands of Fiji and Tonga. Now, here comes the interesting part when it comes to colors. The color, morphs, the color morphs of Anacropora coral uh, can be found in either red, bright green, like this one, or tan colors. Now let's go into the uh, specs when it comes to the care tips to keep one of these. Lighting. Well, I found out that lighting should be between moderate and high. Remembering in reference to light type and intensity, the coral may change in color and in some instances become of a more, let's say, richer color. Uh, higher light parts uh, thus will uh, cause lighter colors. And then lower light uh, parts will uh, cause richer colors on this type of coral and in general on all the acros and the amantes, but specifically the acros. If they are, if the intensity of the light is pretty, pretty high, they will get lighter in color, they'll change colors. And then the same thing holds true if your part value is lower, the colors will become more richer, more brighter. Now when it comes to the flow, I found out that the flow should be moderate to high. Then when it comes to this one, where I have it placed, the MP10 is on the left hand side, so it really shoots a lot of water. I have it on reef crest mode and at 65%, so the coral is really at its comfortable place or placement shall we call it then next will come uh, uh comes feeding uh where you should feed these type of corals it, it's extremely small feedy foods like let's say like rotifers or oyster eggs but you can also feed powdery foods like let's say reef chili which matter of fact yesterday i fed the whole reef with reef chili and then reef roids which I, I do, um, I, alter, I alternate with the reef chili and the reef roids. 
I really prefer more the refroids, to be honest with you. Another thing that I found out in this uh, little mini research is that you should add amino acids. It would be very beneficial. But personally, I would say that when you start to keep SPS corals, although this, as you notice, is a mixed coral, I definitely would start to add amino acids because amino acids does uh, protect the actual skin of, of the actual corals, specifically targeting when you're talking about SPS and, of course, the acros. And this being a mixture of acropora and montes, uh, montipora, I definitely would feed uh, amino acids. I'm feeding it weekly. Like, let's say, on Fridays, I go ahead and I, and I feed it. Now, when it comes to the water chemistry, uh, I found out that it's basically the same. So I put here, I would say, within normal limits. So when I say that, I'm talking about like C8, the calcium between 4, 450, the mag, magnesium, I'd say between, what, 1200 and 1350, pH 80, of course. Uh, I would say the DKH between 8 and 12. But when it comes to DKH and you start to get into acros or SPS in general, uh, the rule of thought uh, that I've been researching and listening and looking at other videos is pick a, a number uh, like A3, A5, 9, and then try to keep it at that, that number. If you have to raise it, I mean, if you have a lot of fluctuations, you might have an issue. Although uh, an acropora is not as sensitive as others acros. But the rule of thumb, and to play it safe, to be honest with you, would be to keep a targeted DKH. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, educational, and fun. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And next to it, there's the notification bell. Hit that so every week when I upload a video, which is usually weekly, uh, you'll be the first ones to know that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. So all I say is uh, keep safe, and like I say on the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Until next time, bye-bye.